I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, Certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. How many times have you actually considered how accessible your architecture guidance actually is? I've fallen foul of this personally many times in the past and have seen many others fantastic sets of architectural guidance and, and their useful artifacts simply be wasted as it wasn't accessible by those that need it. If we can't work out how to share the guidance readily, easily, and at the very first point of need, then it doesn't matter how good it is, how wise or valuable, it won't get used. And that means we need to take time to understand who would benefit from using it across our entire ecosystem of partners, suppliers, customers, and anyone influencing your architectural estate. The key point here is don't hide your assets under a bush. Make sure they are easily available and readily accessible to all, as well as highly publicized and known about. Think about where you can publish them to, how those that need to use them can find them and refer to them, because without this, your efforts could become the greatest asset your enterprise didn't know it had. Hello everyone and welcome to Talk It Tuesday. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're keeping safe and well, but uh, we appreciate you joining us here at Toolkit Tuesday, whatever time of day or night it is for you. My thanks as ever to Paul Homan for a great intro there. Accessible guidance, that's what we all need, isn't it? Um, great thoughts as ever, Paul, thank you for that. And today our main focus will be on the Archimate modeling language. So before we get there though, I will uh, just remind uh, those of you who've uh, attended one of these before and tell those of you who haven't uh, how we do the questions here at Toolkit Tuesday. Just, a, just one real housekeeping thing. And that is, please submit your questions for our speakers today through the Q&A channel in the WebEx tool, not the chat channel. Um, the Q&A channel, if you don't know where that is or you don't see it on your screen, click the three dots in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and that will give you the option to open the Q&A channel and please submit your questions there. I'd also encourage you to use the chat channel to to communicate with uh, other attendees at the event. And we always love one of the things about Toolkit Tuesday here, we always love you to tell us where you're joining us from in the world. So use the chat channel for that and any other messages for attendees, but uh, questions in the Q&A channel, please. That makes it easier for us to uh, watch them coming in and we'll get to as many of them as we can. So without further ado, today's topic is the Archimate modeling language. And in particular, the Archimate 3.2 specification, which is a new release of the specification that we announced just a few weeks ago at our event in Edinburgh. And there's quite a lot of interest in it. Archimate is a modeling language that's great for doing enterprise architecture. It works really well with TOGAF, but you can also use it uh, uh, independent of TOGAF, but a lot of the terminology is similar. So it's a great, uh, a great way to think about using, or a great thing to think about using uh, if you are um, doing enterprise architecture. And today to tell us more about the updates we've made in the 3.2 specification, we have my colleague Kelly Cannon, who is the Archimate Forum Director here at the Open Group. And Kelly's focus is to lead teams to reach their deliverables while never losing sight of the customer. And under her leadership, the forum has uh, completed the release of the 3.2 specification um, and, and introduced the Archimate user community that you'll hear a bit about. With Kelly today is Leos Martes, who is the product manager for Archie Repo, which is an EA product with Dane. 
and he is the, also the vice chair of the Archimate Forum. In addition, Leos is involved with explaining the benefits of enterprise architecture generally to uh, management in both government and commercial enterprises. So a warm welcome for Toolkit Tuesday, please, to Kelly Cannon and Leos Martis. Over to you. Thank you, Steve, and welcome again, everyone, to what is actually my first time presenting on a virtual event. And as Steve mentioned, I will be walking you through what changes have been applied to the 3.2 specification. And then I'll hand things over to Leos to talk about how his organization has implemented those changes. Okay, so a few weeks back, our chair, Jean-Baptiste Serrudy, along with Leos, along with, um, I'm sorry, Mark Lankhorst, was were at the Edinburgh event and they were announcing our new version. And they called this presentation the tip of the iceberg because it embodied how our forum not only reached this deliverable, but where we go from a forum and a um, practitioner community as a whole. So the first thing that we did was back in October 2020, we implemented the Archimate user community. And with that, the forum decided to utilize this space to gather additional input from a broader community and receive feedback towards the next version of the specification. From that feedback campaign, we actually netted about 74 comments, and these comments were brought into our Coronado team, which is a work group within the forum, that were then able to go through and update each, of, or, I'm sorry, go through and um, provide meaningful feedback to each of those comments that were received. And then we were able to provide feedback to either accept, reject, or um, <clears throat> place them on the backlog for a future release. As a team, we knew that we were going to be putting out a minor release, and because of that, a few comments did remain on the backlog that were deemed too substantial for this update. With the success of the feedback campaign, though, we were able to manage, and we are going to continue to manage, what our backlog looks like from there. After that, the Coronado team then developed the first version that would go into the uh, Archimate forum to then receive their feedback. We then received an additional 84 comments that the same Coronado team worked through, and we were able to put together a final draft as well as a technical core agendum in support that would then go into company review. A company review is the final stage of the review process within any standard of the open group. And for those unfamiliar with a company review, it is when a document is posted for all of the members of the open group, regardless of the level, to then provide input and feedback to the changes proposed by uh, the authors or the forum that has put it forward. And finally, we reached the finish line and we were able to publish both the standard and the technical core agenda. We were very excited as a team to reach this milestone because we were able to present it together at the Edinburgh event. And it was extra special because some of us were actually able to meet for the very first time or at least the first time since COVID. So what's next? Just like with any other standard, there are a number of updates that need to happen to be addressed in the overall ecosystem. But the journey is never ending when it comes to supporting a standard that brings in users and certified individuals uh, over time. So at the moment, we do not have a set review schedule for when we will do another update. However, prior to the Edinburgh event, I did release a short five question survey to our forum members to see where we go from here. The responses were then discussed at the face-to-face -face members meeting, and with the members in the room, we determined that there is a greater need for guidance documentation rather than releasing a new version of the standard so soon after this one. Some of the topics that we were discussing were related to Archimate modeling language in the use of solution, business, information, and infrastructure architecture, while also providing guidance documentation on the Archimate user, Archimate modeling in for those that use AWS. Additionally, we were also talking about a style guide for those that are going to be presenting models within their organization. There will be more information and opportunities for you to get involved in this coming soon. Okay. 
So let's jump into the changes of 3.2. We did not introduce any new concepts or relationships. However, you will find changes in the following key areas. The technical core addendum has greater details on each of these changes. However, in general, most of them were either editorial and some were technical, but there were some additions, subtractions, and overall improvements on clarity. One of the more noticeable changes that longtime users will recognize will be visual in nature, and that was to update the consistency and the elements. As you can see, the boxes are no longer three-dimensional with the exception of node. The intention set by the forum was to simplify the visual aspect of the overall models. And as you can see here, there are minor changes to the overall set. For instance, the icons that were not previously filled in with color are now filled in with the corresponding color such as the business actor in the person's head. The work package icon also was updated to be a clear circle with an arrow. The team also clarified some of the definitions, such as the one noted here, where there is some unclear terminology and that didn't make the, the definition very useful. One important note that I actually want to repeat from Mark Langhorst when he gave this portion of the presentation is that it is very important that any user or practitioner should not just read the definition, but also read and understand the extended explanation so you may best understand it. And as you can see here, the meta model was updated to reflect the changes made in the technology layer. Specifically, you can see it reflected with the updated terminology and arrows. While the existing rules were not changed, they were updated for consistency and clarity where necessary for formalization, including restrictions on application. Grouping is the only derivation rule that was added. And finally, before I hand the rest of the presentation over to Leos, I would like to introduce those of you who may not be familiar with the Open Group Archimate user community. This space is unique for the Archimate forum because it brings individuals who use Archimate in their organizations, or maybe even just for fun, <laughs> together with members dedicated to the growth of the language. From a user perspective, it brings novice and experienced practitioners together to discuss and provide assistance to a fellow modeler. In, in addition to mentorship board for individuals, we are encouraging the use of sharing models. And we know that this may be difficult due to some IP restrictions. However, if you do have a model that you can share with us, please do so. It may help out a fellow, a fellow novice modeler, or at the very least, it starts a conversation. Further, if you are a content creator for Archimate in the way of blogs, informational support documents, or imagery that you would like to have shared with a broader audience, we're happy to post a link in the Archimate user community to your website to showcase that. Please feel free to reach out to me. And my final plug is going to be, please be sure to share the Archimate user community on your social media. We need to get the message out far and wide in order for it to be adopted. And we want it to be the, the resource and the community space that everyone goes to. So I would like to pull in Leos now, and he will speak to the changes of the Archimate model exchange file format and how Dane was able to implement those changes. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the, the changes made during the 3.2 update were minor, and therefore the changes to the Archimate model exchange file format were minor as well. So here is the inside of a tool vendor. At first, uh, let's talk about something in between the tip of the iceberg and what lies beneath the surface. Uh, the Archimate exchange file format has been here for years and it has proven to be extremely useful for interoperability. Not only because it allows uh, architects to share models between tools, but also for the exchange of data outside an EA model. So let's go ahead. And what's happening behind the scenes? Uh, the MF update is now in development and we expect to release it during the first quarter of uh, 2023. But to do it right, we decided to take several actions before, uh, before we will uh, release it. We will continue to work with the tool vendors and forum members for their, for their guidance and support. 
but also those in the community that have submitted feedback on two issues board. There are currently three vendors who confirmed that they are ready and they have implemented the first stage of the 3.2 updates. We have been in touch with other vendors and they have committed their support as well, which is uh, where the quarter one delivery comes in. Next, please. What is important to tell, as Kelly mentioned a few slides before, are the visual changes to the notation. With that being said, uh, because we didn't not make any major changes, such as adding any new elements uh, to the notation, the use of 3.1 tool is still completely acceptable. The tool vendors will need to decide if they will support box icon or both notations and of course the other changes in XML. What we at ArchRepo have determined to be most beneficial for our users is to extend the specification with alignments and the box icon notation options so that every user in every tool receives almost the same visual feel of the diagrams. Also, we will continue to keep up to date uh, with whatever changes comes from the forum and the user community, even that the changes has to be minor for this release. Anyway, the major ones uh, are tracked either for other releases in the future. Next, please. So from the perspective of a tool vendor, maybe we have some advantage as we do not provide any client application to install. Instead, we are 100% web-based. Our focus is on maintaining the model and the collaboration instead of core modeling, although we do support that also. So the changes were, were easy uh, for us uh, to apply. We also kept the 3.0 certification of the tool as there were the only minor changes. At ArchRepo, we are focused on supporting enterprise architecture and the Archimate modeling language, which we strive to be great at as opposed uh, to UML and many other standards. Therefore, we decided to keep the standard box notation for now. So what I want to give you is now a, a brief uh, walkthrough about the changes and how they are represented in our tool. On the right side, uh, you can see the new version of, of ArchRepo, which uses 3.2 standard. And on the left side is old version with 3.1 specification. So as we start with the meaning, uh, the meaning has been unified to box notation. In the old version, it was represented with a cloud, which you can now find in the icon notation itself, as you can see now. Uh, then the contract, uh, well, it's still a rectangle, now with an icon. In the old version, it used to be presented in a different way, as you can see in a minute. and the old interpretation of application component, which you can see on the right, uh, the blue one, has moved to icon notation, uh, which the new 3.2 has an icon instead of rectangle stepping out of the big rectangle. So you will see on the left now. And for example, a gap, the red one, has not changed the visual, but the color to better reflect the implementation layer. And in case of device, it's also now represented with icon in a rectangle. As you will see, no difference. Uh, we didn't keep the exact notation in 3.2 either. <laughs> so maybe we predicted the changes a few years before <laughs> to be ready for the new version of standard. We have the interpretation the same. So for us, uh, these changes to the standard did not cause any trouble. Uh, 
when it came time to implement because we represent our enterprise architecture in many other ways as you can see on the structured look on the left the power bi reports and the object view of closest elements on the right so we know that the the core is how to handle the data which are objects not a table and we consider this to be the strongest advantage of archimate which all users can harvest so next slide please So as you saw, Archie Repo, along with the Biz Design and Archie, are ready for the users. We support the activities because we all see the value in easily exchanging model between tools. The market has shown that uh, when enterprise architecture comes to the front, the universal tools are moving to the back. And also we hear from our customers that the icon notation and specialization where you can add any icon you want uh, may be more sexy when presented to the management level as uh, you saw on the slide before i think this this ability is a good direction in which we are heading with the standard because all of us met with the with the response like i don't know what these kind of rectangles mean so the changes were designed to support you the practitioners and your communication with management. We all believe that uh, enterprise architects should be involved at the highest level of the decision-making process. So that's it. Thank you for your time with us and heading, handing back to over to Kelly for a wrap up and Q and A's if you have some questions to discuss. Yes, so, and just one final comment. So. This is just a call to action. Please take a look at our latest version. It is published in the Archimate Library on the Open Group website. Also check out the Archimate user community. And thank you to Leos and Dane for being able to provide us a little bit of insight into Archie Repo and be sure to check them out as well. So over to you, Joanne. Thank you very much. Um, so we do have a few questions that have come in. Um, let's see, how long did it take your development team to imp to implement the changes for this update well i think it's on me uh, so um the the implementation was really quick uh, in a couple of mondays um well, of course it depends on each tool vendor how wide or how complicated the software is uh, we have the advantage as we are a web tool so the changes are made and deployed quickly but at least if the vendor implements the basic minimum i don't think it's a big deal we are hoping that most if not all the other tool vendors will be updated by the end of the year maybe in the first quarter next year okay, great and let's see, we do have another one. Um, when do you expect to release Archimate 4.0? Um, well, you know, we are, we're pretty proud of the fact that we've reached the level of maturity that we have with version 3.2. Um, you know, we try not to put out too many new releases of a major version because we don't wanna disrupt the certification program as well. So we do need to take that into consideration, but ultimately it is going to be up to the users and what feedback we get into the Archimate user community. So if the users or trainers put in enough meaty, <laughs> issues into the feedback board then the team will then take those on board and decide from there whether or not it is something worth a minor release or a major release okay. yeah that's that's right uh, we are re re reviewing the submissions to the issues board and the discussion board all the time okay. uh, well there are some inputs that may be more relevant but extending the language to uh, more specific stuff uh, will kill the adoption. So we want to keep the Archimate language as generic as we can. And uh, of course, we all, uh, usually find out that in the specific cases, if you want to model something exact, we find out that uh, you could already existing, you, you, you could use already existing elements to express your intention and intentions. So, and there is also something called specialization and other stuff. So that's that's it. 
Okay. Um, let's see. One came through the chat channel and it says, uh, let's see, when will the two certifications foundation and practitioner be aligned with the version 3.0 instead of three, I mean, 3.2 versus 3.0. So usually it follows in about six months after any new release of a standard. Um, we saw that with the TOGAF release and we'll probably see that same timeline here, depending on what the certification authority deems um, what the timeline will look like, we can always provide updates as that changes as well. Okay. Let's see, we've got another one. Let's see, how useful were the suggestions from the community? I would say they were very useful. Um, a lot of them were editorial and we were able to easily make those changes and accept a lot of them. Some of them were topics that we as a forum have discussed previously and the team had already made a decision to go in one direction or not in another. So we were able to kind of go through a lot of those uh, issues that were suggested uh, rather quickly and then provide the feedback to the contributor. Let's see, okay, we've got room for one more question. Um, what are the main benefits to moving the conversions from the LinkedIn group to the argument community? Sure, so LinkedIn is a great tool and we're definitely not saying to move away from LinkedIn completely. We do have 13,000 users or interested parties on that LinkedIn site. Uh, one of the main benefits and drivers to using the argument user community is to be able to recall some of the conversations that were already happening. So if we have an issue that is posted in the discussion board that is uh, talking about derivation rules, for example, we can then have a catalog discussion. And if someone has further feedback or uh, wants to contribute something else later on a couple months or a year later, they can either go back through, read through the conversation that has already happened or continue on that conversation. And then the other added benefit is to share models, which you can't really do through LinkedIn unless you wanna start sharing your personal information and then that way you can send them offline LinkedIn. Here, if you post them up on the Argument user community, other people will be able to have access to that and we can create a really good catalog. Great, great. Anything else to add to that, Leo? So we get, are you, anything you wanna to add to that? Yeah, and we have also a good working search function in in our community GitHub. So <laughs> that could Great, be yes. also the difference. Yeah. All right, Kelly Leos, thank you very much for your presentation and your time today. Um, we I went ahead and captured additional questions that we could address maybe on the back end. Um, but thank you for today, and um, we on for our outro from Steve Nunn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Leos, for a great session. And uh, thank you to the audience for your participation and to my colleague, Joe Alvarado, for handling the questions today. So that's it for this particular episode of Toolkit Tuesday. But please join us in two weeks on November 29th, where my colleague, Sonia Gonzalez, will be giving us an update of the portfolio of digital open standards. And uh, some of you may have heard about this before and seen an early uh, explanation of what we're trying to achieve here, which is basically making it easier for our standards to be used together at the Open Group, making them more readily accessible and uh, be able to search across them, all sorts of pretty cool stuff. And uh, we have made a lot of progress and Sonia is going to be joining us to update us on that and give us a demo of uh, how it looks today and how you can, uh, how you can use it already. So. Um, that's where we're at in two weeks time, November 29th. Please be here again for Toolkit Tuesday. Meantime, um, keep safe. Uh, I've, I'm Steve Nunn. Thank you for joining Toolkit Tuesday.